This video is sponsored by Bethesda. Right now is a better time than ever to hop into the Elder Scrolls Online with their brand new chapter Necrom releasing, which is available on PC, Mac, Xbox, PlayStation, and now even the Epic Game Store, with the base game being available entirely for free on the Epic Game Store until July 27th. Necrom features an insane amount of content to sink your teeth into, ranging from a brand new playable class, which is available for all existing and new players, called the Arcanist, which we will be taking a closer look at today. The Arcanist is an incredibly powerful new class that adapts to any and pretty much all playstyles, and for a limited time, you can actually unlock special rewards for your Arcanist by just participating in the Ascent of the Arcanist promotion that's going on right now. If you end up reaching level 10 with the class, you can claim an awesome reward bundle giving you a bunch of goodies, so it's definitely the perfect time to try it out. However, this promotion does end on July 28th. Not only is there a brand new class in Necrom, but there's even new quests and areas to explore, such as the new biomes Telvanni Peninsula, a brand new addition to Morrowind, and the Hermaeus Mora Realm of Apocrypha, which actually was in Skyrim as part of the Dragonborn DLC, so it's insanely cool to see it returning. In each of these new zones, you can experience brand new stories, quests, challenges, and get a ton of epic rewards, and there's just so much new stuff to explore. And on top of that, ESO is actually just the perfect game to try out because you can very easily play solo without really feeling behind, but there's also a ton of very interesting and engaging group content that you can end up getting into, such as the brand new 12 player trial and world events that Necrom is introducing. ESO is also now available on the Epic Game Store with the standard edition of the game actually being completely for free, so you can very easily just jump in today with absolutely no cost and try it out if you visit the Epic Game Store. Now that you know everything Necrom has to offer, I wanted to take a closer look at the Arcanist class as it looks like a ton of fun, and I wanted to actually show you guys what it would be like to make one yourself. The Arcanist has access to a ton of different abilities, with there being three different specializations depending on your preferred playstyle. You can either be a DPS, a tank, or a healer, each with their own different set of abilities, passives, and ultimate skills. Some of these abilities are absolutely insane from firing tentacles from your arm, channeling like a massive eye beam literally creating portals on the battlefield that you and your allies can teleport to between, and even shielding yourself in a bubble of defensive ichor, just absorbing crazy amounts of damage. Personally, the DPS skill line is the most appealing to me, as it just seems like a crazy amount of fun to slap enemies in the face with a bunch of tentacles, so that's what we're going to be trying out today. Alright, let's make an Arcanist. Um, it's been a really long time since I've played ESO, so Arcanist selected. I think we can play any class with the or any race with this game. I'll probably do Ebonheart, and then I forget what I always played as. I think I always played as Dark Elf because of the uh, passive bonus for the Int um, and the spell damage. I don't 100% know if that's still good, but Dark Elves are Chads, so we'll go Arcano Chad as our name, based, randomized appearance. <laughs> okay. All right, looks arcane -y enough. What do we look like in champion gear? That's sick. All green to fit the Arcanist theme. No gear, this is how I should be. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, let's see if we can create it. Boom. Uh, the tutorial, uh, we don't need to do the tutorial. I had to change a few of my settings, but let's get going. I mainly just want to try out the actual skills, so I'll see you guys when I get some skills. One thing I really like about this game is just how far I can be zoomed out in third person. I really prefer to play third person usually. Get to pick a weapon. What what fits the Arcanist theme? More of like a you know, a fire staff, right? So we'll start off with the fire staff. So my ultimate goal is to end up getting Abyssal Impact, where I can smack enemies in the face with my tentacles. So that means I need to play Herald of the Tomb for the DPS spec. At level one, I got Rune Blade, so it's the only ability I have right now. But it's pretty cool. It's one one of the ones that I showcased earlier. Is you just slam a bunch of cards at them. Here, I'll show you guys a little full screen. Does pretty good damage. It doesn't cost too much mana either, so you can kind of just spam it, which is a lot of fun. I might mess around with some of the other abilities as well as I start to unlock them. I'm really just looking forward to getting uh, Fate Carver and Abyssal Impact here. I leveled up and made it to Telvanni Peninsula, which I was talking about earlier in the video, and this place is sick. It kind of reminds me of uh, Zanger Marsh, if any of you guys have been there. There's a bunch of massive mushrooms everywhere. But also, with me leveling up, I got another skill point. Unfortunately, actually, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to use my I Beam. So I got access to the I Beam. I thought I was gonna. I'll probably spec into Runic Jolt here. I'm um, a little bit. I actually have another skill point for it too. So I got the massive I Beam that we were showing earlier, and I also got the uh, defensive rune that also deals damage and it reduces the damage that the enemy does. So let's check out check out the I Beam. 
on one of these dudes. <laughs> oh crap. <laughs> Dude, help! Uh, he did not like that. He did not like that. It kind of melts. I think it does more damage based on Crux if I cast... If I cast the one skill and then I get the... And then I get more of the Crux things around me. And then I use the beam, I think it'll do more damage. Doesn't seem to do anything to this guy. This guy just hates me. I think this is like a boss or something. I don't think I'm supposed to be fighting this guy. Kicking my ass. But the beam looks... <laughs> that beam looks so cool. It channels for like way longer than I thought it would do. Okay, dude! This guy's a bully, man! What is this guy? 5,000 damage. Okay, I definitely was not supposed to be fighting that guy. I will do the bullying now. <laughs> it doesn't... Does it work on the shroom beetles? That's okay, I guess. The shroom beetles are cute. I'll leave him alone. Dude, he's got little mushrooms on him, man. What a chad. I really like this zone. It's like super open. All the mushrooms are cool. You can see the massive mushrooms in the back. I also jump on the mushrooms, too. Really gives me a, a Zanger Marsh plus, like, Nagrand feeling. I didn't think there was fall damage. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay, I revive right here, easy. Yeah, you want to generate all your crux with this spell, and then if you use your eye beam then it spends all of it, and then it does a crap load of more damage. And then the new spell that we got is this one. Pretty much just hit them, do a little bit of damage, and then it reduces the damage that they take, or the, that they do to us. That's pretty good. Um, right now, I'm just a 1 and a 2 spammer, because I want to be an eye beam gamer. I-beam gaming, holy crap, that guy got, that guy got smelted. One of the things I like about the I-beam is that it just can hit an infinite amount of mobs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to group up everything in here. I'm going to try to I-beam all of them. Please don't kill me. <laughs> this might not have been a good idea, but I want to try it. All right, now I can blast all of them. Oh, oh, oh. Bzzz. Go, dude. Alright again, because these guys were these guys were spread out, these guys hate my fun. Look at that. Holy oh, easy melt, dude. And the more that okay, level four, level four? Big. The more that I also use these skills, the more that I'm leveling up my Herald of the Tomb. So I'm actually gonna get my tentacle a lot faster than I thought I was going to. I'm almost at level six already. I do need to be level twenty, but it seems to be leveling really quick. And every time I level it, um, the damage of this stuff is just going to get better and better. My skill points, I may actually put the point into uh, healing myself through the Rune Mend rather than the Runic Jolt, because this is kind of nice, but I, I'm not taking too much damage right now, and having the heal I think would be pretty good. I could also level up my staff, but I'm mainly focused on trying to get my big tenty. Yeah, the heal also actually generates Crux too, which can kind of be used to give us more damage too, so that we can heal ourselves and then generate Crux to um, use the I-Beam, so that's pretty good. Oh, we got a little we got a little boss fight. I can show off my epic healing hack. I'm just gonna melt this dude. I'm just gonna beam this dude up. Can't even handle the beam hack. Infinite damage. I think I'm supposed to stand here. I'm not supposed to sure. Use the wrath, alright. Out of the CC. Not sure what this tentacle is that I'm spawning. But dude, the beam just melts this guy. And look. Dude, do some damage, noob. Guys, this guy sucks. Do some damage. Look at the healing. Big heal. Kill some adds. Just just annihilated. No big deal. I can do this thing so he does less damage. My three, I forget what it's called. Uh, hopefully we just melt him down here with the beam. World's easiest boss fight because beam is just OP. Get annihilated, dude. Couldn't handle the heat. Let's go. I completely forgot about morphing. So I can morph my rune blades, which is the crux generator, into writhing rune blades. See what the difference is. Basically, I would just make it do more damage, and it can scale off of crit. And this one makes it do a lot of AoE damage. I think I want to have it scale off of crit, but there's also... I'll spend my skill point there, and my next skill point, I can get a passive, which is really good. I just get a ton of extra crit damage. Anytime I generate or consume cr Crux, that's going to be really nice for us. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll get to level 10 today, because i got to take my cat to the vet. But there's a few things that I've learned. I've had a lot of fun with my time so far. One of the really cool things that I like about the class, and that I think is just a thing systemically, is that I can play with a lot of the different abilities. So I've been playing with um, this healing ability the whole time, and I actually just morphed it as well. So it heals me a significant more amount, and it also generates Crux. So I just generate a whole bunch of Crux while healing myself. And the Crux just makes it to where I can then use my beam and do significantly more damage. 
and also I'm using the jolt so that the enemies that I'm fighting just do less damage to me. And the more cruxes that I have, the less damage that the enemies will be doing to me. So it all just works very synergistically, but I'm still able to dump a bunch of skill points into my main skill line. Unfortunately, I didn't get the tentacle, which is what I really wanted to play with, but I don't have too much more time left. But I've really been enjoying the playstyle of generating the crux with my first ability and then spending it with my second one, just absolutely nuking. And then anytime that, you know, I'm taking any amount of damage, I can just heal myself and get some more crux here. Let's fight this guy up here. What up, bud? So he'll hit me a little bit, and then I can I can pop my heal, and that generates crux. Pretty much full heal instantly. And then I can just smack him up and spend all the crux on the beam to just nuke everything. My cat does not like it when I, when I record videos. There's way more stuff that I really am... am God, I'm so bad at the menus. There's way more stuff that I really wanted to try out um, that I'm super eager to see. The unblinking eye. This thing seems pretty crazy. Just seems nice to have a little minion just do a whole bunch of damage for you passively while you can still do damage. And it, you know, is unlocked at level 12. So you get that pretty early on. Abyssal Impact is really what I was looking forward to. But I just like all the options that you have. You have so many different skill points. So you can really just like mix and match between the builds. And you can also pair that very nicely with a lot of your like other stuff. So with my light armor, I can actually um, reduce the mana cost of stuff with um, Avocation here, so just pairs very nicely with the build overall, and I'm really excited to keep playing and actually unlock the stuff, like the tentacle and stuff, so make sure you guys give it a try, and again, if you get to level 10, you end up getting like the really big bundle of goodies for playing the Arcanist, so yeah, thanks for watching, and um, I hope you guys have as much fun with the Arcanist as I did.